There you go. Now you have some real privacy. Do I want to know what he's doing back there? Wizard, wizard, wizard. Uh, well, I think you have a little too much privacy back there. Well, I found the massage feature on this. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, thank goodness. Let there be light. <laughs> Hello. Hi. <laughs> we can turn the conference off. Welcome to Hoovy's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube, and this is my latest family hauler, a 2004 Mybox 62 with the limo-style partition. So many options. Wouldn't knew this car was over $500,000, but since it has 100,000 miles and I got a pretty good deal at auction, I bought it for over 90% off, or a little over $40,000 for a Mercedes limousine with unbelievable technology that is all 100% working, which seems like a miracle. But this car is so darn well built that we shouldn't be surprised. But of course, being a Mercedes with over 100,000 miles, it does have some issues. And even though I did buy it cheap, this was a $500,000 car at one time with some pretty crazy tech. So there is some huge mechanical gotchas with these things. Now I've been through all this before with the 57, but the 62 is in a totally different league. But under the hood, it's all the same Mercedes V12. I mentioned in the last video that some accessory, some idler pulley, something is making a bad bearing noise. And everything there should be normal Mercedes parts with one exception, and that is the alternator. Most fancy cars, say like a Mercedes S-Class, have a 250 amp alternator. This one is 600 and it is water-cooled, and the price is an eye-watering $7,000 if you replace it from Mercedes. So if that's what is making the noise in here, I'm gonna be crying for sure, but hopefully not. In addition, the air suspension is giving an intermittent warning, maybe one out of every three times I drive it, I get a warning that it immediately goes away. These are special air shocks to the Maybach. They are air ride and they are about four thousand dollars a pop. Of course, there are some workarounds. The shocks can be sent off to be rebuilt. Same with the crazy alternator and a tune-up on these things. Same like the V12. It's a long coil pack, six coils in one span, two thousand dollars each for Mercedes times two, so four thousand dollars, five thousand dollar tune-up, but you can get those rebuilt, remanufactured as well. But that's all a long wait for parts. You have to send them off, get them fixed, they get sent back. The car can be down for a very long time, so you have to be patient. But thankfully, this car isn't misfiring. It stays up. The air ride suspension doesn't go down after it sits for several days. And like I said, all the accessories are working. But then my daughter, well, thankfully she didn't get my nose, but she got everything else like me, including her ability to break things. And she has broken one of the interior storage doors in the Maybach. She's a bowl in a china closet, a chip off the old block. So hopefully those are easy fixes. And the car wizard doesn't find any other surprises with this 100,000 mile originally $500,000 Maybach. Well, I told my trusty mechanic, the car wizard, to come outside so he can experience the lap of luxury. There's this beautiful Cadillac, and there's the beautiful car wizard. Hello. Oh, this wrecked thing back in my shop, man. Is it wrecked? Yeah, isn't this the one that got wrecked and like No, this twice? is the, it's different. It's the 62. It's the long wheelbase, an extra six inches. Oh, I'm definitely in the partition. Now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course you are. It's different, obviously. Look in the back. Oh, wow. Have a seat. Wow. I'll come around the other side. Yeah, you got your recline button on the door right here. This doesn't even seem like a car in here. <laughs> it's not, it's a private jet. And while you're reclining, uh, I can change the roof for you, excuse me. Go ahead and look up, I'm gonna push this button. And there's the bright blue sky, what? or gray sky, yeah. How, how did it do that? Electrochromatic roof. I guess the sky's kinda gray, so you can't really tell. But you can also completely shade yourself. Man, this is amazing. Yeah, not only here, but literally everywhere else. There you go. We also have the glass here so you can have complete privacy. I'll put on some Star Trek for you and uh, take you on a cruise, all right? This is sweet. All right, my first client as a chauffeur, and it's not my child, it's really quiet back there actually, so let's give him a call on the intercom. Hello? Wizard. What's going on? 
fun. How are you doing back there? I really do feel like I'm an airplane, like I'm flying. This doesn't feel like a car at all. <laughs> well, let me get your in-flight movie going here. Just a moment. See anything yet? Yeah, on the uh, passenger side, that one's playing Star Trek. Oh, good. What's the driver's one say? It says, to prevent driver from being distracted, the picture is faded out while the car is... Now, now it's working. Yep, there we go. Because I mirrored it into the car. This is amazing. I really don't feel like I'm in a car right now. I know I keep saying that. <laughs> it is really something like the finest private jet ever. And the fact that it's almost 20 years old, 2004, it's just absolutely astounding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do I want to know what he's doing back there? Wizard? Wizard? What? Wizard? Uh, I think you have a little too much privacy back there. Well, I found the massage feature on this. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, thank goodness. Let there be light. <laughs> Hello. Hi. <laughs> we can turn the conference off. Man, this thing is so smooth. It's smooth, but it's also fast. 550 horsepower V12. Oh, man. It actually take a turn as well. Holy moly. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> almost, How did do I that? just almost drifted a Maybach. <laughs> Holy moly. I felt like we were going to lose it. <laughs> well, it did trigger an aromatic warning. Uh, so there are some things for you to look at <laughs> back of the shop. Yes, definitely. I want to keep looking at this interior now. <laughs> You got your clicker, wizard? Uh, no, but you can honk the horn. They should come and open the door for us. Oh, well, this thing has a horn. It's like a train horn. <laughs> it's, it's much like Clarkson with his 600 grocer back in Top Gear. Mm -hmm, I remember <laughs> that one. <laughs> Holy moly. It is loud. The horn definitely works. It's it's a loud one. <laughs> I mean, this is basically the successor to that car, the 600 grocer that what you know Elvis had, and mm -hmm. so many other dignitaries and dictators. It's absolutely huge, though. Maneuverability is not. It's strong suit. So, so two immediate issues here, wizard, with this gigantic door my daughter decided to use this as a jungle gym and she broke this cabinet here unfortunately oh no and so one there's the latch mm -hmm. one screw is down here the other screw has gone deep into the door panel well the latch is not damaged i think we could definitely fix that it, it just needs to be reattached it got stripped out yeah but uh i wonder if the door panel is going to have to come off to fix it unfortunately it may well there's leonard mccoy right there Anyway, mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt your Star Trek episode. Uh, but the biggest concern that I have with this car, other than the aromatic warning message that just popped up, is uh, the noise under the hood. Let's take a look. Yeah. You sure as heck never want this roof to ever break. A $50,000 option, and that's also the replacement cost, but it's all, yeah. it's all working fine. All the shades, I mean, really everything works on this car, which is just absolutely astounding. It's amazing. So while it's here in the shop, I definitely know where I'm going to be taking my brakes at. Oh, really? Okay. I'll be hanging out in the car. Well, I got the whole second season in there for you. Awesome. <laughs> All right. But uh, actually, it's sounding pretty quiet right now. Yeah, I don't hear anything. That is a big belt. Holy yeah. moly. Look. So that is, a, you think, a Maybach-specific belt? Oh, absolutely. Is that like 10, 12 ribs? Huh. Well, you'll have to listen for it again, I guess, when it's cold. Because on cold start, until it warms up, there is definitely a noise. Okay. Let me try and turn it off and on again. Alright. No. Huh. It definitely won't be standard S600 pulleys and belts and things. Well, I think that some of them are. Well, I guess it's wider, huh? Yeah, it's really wide. Okay. So I thought that was all the same, but apparently not. No. All right. Well, before we go up on the lift, let's check on the other projects because there has been a lot of progress. Yes. Yes. Magic Mike with his blown eardrums is putting the jack motor back together and it's all clean. Yep. Wow. 
getting ready to be raised back up into the car. Very cool. So what ended up being the solution for the rear main seal? They actually have some that are pre-made, pre-shaped for this with a graphite coating. It's just a rope seal. I figured out a way to pull the carrier out without pulling the crank and it went really well. Oh, you're still rubbing on things over here, huh? Still rubbing on things. I'm trying to get all the old gaskets off of here. Now you can really see the matching number block. Yep. But I kind of want to leave it this cool but clean patina here. It'll match the rest of the car. Mm -hmm. You can see it was gold on top and black on yeah. the block. It's so cool looking. It's really tall as well. Yeah, it's like a little train engine. So anything else to do on this? Before it goes back in we're going to do the valve cover gaskets that were seeping a little bit we're going to check out the breather tube make sure it's nice and free so it doesn't cause any issues and also also obviously some gaskets ah the intake gaskets yeah yep okay well how's jag life been it hasn't been too bad how's the mercedes slk been that's been a different story i saw your video yeah the first one did you break it it's it needs some work oh well, the gift that keeps on giving. Sorry, but I appreciate your dedication on the Jag, but... Of course. The other thing I'm seeing is the Ferrari. It's been in a resting place since, like, August, and now it's in a different spot. It's done. Okay. It's done is something I've been waiting for you to say for a very long time, but it's mm -hmm. not your fault. We've been waiting on parts for this. First, the catalytic converters, and then the resonator delete, which mm -hmm. this car is vacuum cleaner quiet from the factory, even though it is a Ferrari V12. So can I? Yes, it sounds really good. Oh my God. It's been a long time, four, five, six. It's still quiet. I don't want to rev it too much because it's cold, but you can definitely hear a little more. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I know what I'm taking home today. Yes. But anyway, let's get back to the Maybach. We're having some issues. Giving her shit all she's got, Captain. What? You can fit big old trucks on the lift, but not a Maybach? Well, the specific pads for these where they're supposed to go is farther than a truck even. Got too much length here. What? It's too long for our lift. What about the four post one? It's too long for the four post. Yeah, everything is plastic panels under there. If I go off of those little special pads, it's gonna break something. So in order for us to look underneath, we're gonna have to like use a creeper and a jack? Yeah, basically. Okay, well, let me raise up the suspension here. Give us a head start. Anyway. Get these arms out of the way. All right. I just don't wanna hurt your car, it's too nice. Okay, so we're tipping it on its side. All right. So could you make longer arms, Wizard? I probably can. I'd have to get some square tubing that slides over the end of those. It just needs that six inches. All right, so we're creeping on the car, yeah, huh? I'm ready. All right. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, um, so what can we see? Nothing but plastic. Absolutely. No, well, that's the floor of the car. Can we go over the engine? Yeah, we let's, can. Let's... This is a, a very first time for us. Oh, I just hit the jack and wizard's under the car. Jeez. Okay. So, pretty much dry. There's a little bit of seepage maybe from a drain plug. Okay. But yeah, it does look really nice under there, huh? Yeah, it looks very clean. And it's a lifelong Texas so car. So you see the bottom right here, this shop is like dusty colored okay but look at the other side it's like it's been replaced it's brand new oh so we have one new air shock which yeah. are about four grand new a piece yep yeah well that's the only air light i have is with the uh, airmatic which even though this thing's six inches longer you can still plug it in right yeah we can still plug it in but no leaky no. oh it looks really nice under here too Any issues? Mm, I don't see anything leaking. That's a beefy differential. Yeah. That's a long drive shaft too. <laughs> it is very long. 
CV boots look good over here. You see any grease or anything swinging over there? No. I don't see any issues other than we saw that a shock or strut's been replaced. All right, let's see what the error message is. So where's that alternator? Alternator looks like it's down here all the way at the bottom. Deep. Deep. Okay. Well, I know there's some redundancies on these cars, so is there like two air conditioners, something like that? I think there's only a single air conditioning compressor, but what you do have twice the SBC pumps. You have a left and a right. Oh, the brake by wire system that Mercedes abandoned. This one has two of them, huh? Oh yep. my goodness. Why? Well, you've got two calipers on each wheel, so oh, you need to right. double the SBC pump. Yep. I mean, the braking is unbelievable on this car. But yeah, one, two calipers. Holy crap. Okay. I'm happy to see that. Uh, well, <laughs> I think Mercedes warrantied those for 25 years? Something crazy like that, right? Something like that, yeah. So you, you might still be under warranty. No, yeah. no, no warranty. <laughs> no, exactly. I can send it somewhere else. <laughs> we are scanning. We are Cars scanning. Cars being behaved and quiet, which is weird. All right. So a stored code, left front body acceleration sensor, zero point variation. And then a stored event, critical vehicle level at front axle. I wonder what that was from. Oh, I wonder. It was critical. <laughs> Holy moly! We took that turn a little hard, so the top one's probably what is giving me the intermittent fault, huh? Yep. So that's... what is that? Well, we gotta look it up, but more than likely there's just an accelerate. There's probably a left and right acceleration sensor at the front, left and right at the rear. We'll have to double check it, see what's going on. Since it's stored, it may not be a permanent fault. Uh, we'll just kind of have to see what, the, what it says. But why do you need an acceleration sensor for air suspension? Well, acceleration is used for front and back, left, and there's yaw rate. There's all kinds of different sensors and there's used for to stiffen up the shocks or oh. it can tell which way the body's leaning, front, back, left, right, and make adjustments as necessary. Okay. Well, I'll leave it with you guys to dig in, but also cold start. It'll make that racket. You'll hear the bearing pulley noise and it better not be that alternator. I and hope not. I guess I can take the Ferrari home, huh? Yes. Okay. Awesome. You pull it forward for me? Yep. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, this is gonna be some delayed gratification here. Oh, oh no, it's... You got a bill, you can't leave yet. He's determined. $1,300 just in, oh, well, there's some temp sensors in there, a little bit of stuff. Yep, and there's a battery, there's an oil change, and then the labor to pull all the caps. Yeah, because I paid for the fab speed, catalytic converters and the uh, resonator bypass. So anyway, there was some Diagnostics, obviously. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the Ferrari world, that's just another day of the week. Uh, I haven't gotten used to it, though. No, it, you don't get used to that. <laughs> you are. You're enjoying it. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I enjoy taking the money, but not if it happens to me, no. Wait, wait. Well, actually, speaking of, where is your Ferrari? It's at Polk Performance, the guy that you use getting tuned. Oh, dyno tuned? Yes. It's close. <laughs> I think I've had this 1994 Ferrari 456 for over two years now. It was the Car Trek 4 car that I imported from Dubai. Had very, very low miles or kilometers, now 16,000 kilometers. But when I got it, it was just under 10. This gated manual is so wonderful with the V12, but the noise, the noise was always off. But now, let's see. Oh yeah. You can actually hear the engine now. It's still quiet, but much, much better. Well, it's great to have this Ferrari home. It may not be the most beautiful Ferrari ever made, kind of plain looking, maybe kind of like a Ford Probe, as Ed and Freddie constantly pointed out in the car trek. But having that V12 gated manual, four seat car, it's a great experience, especially for the money. These cars, I still think, are pretty undervalued. I'm very happy after well, six months to have at home. But also what showed up at home is the titles on the vehicles I bought at Barrett-Jackson, including the Maybach, and I thought this was quite funny. The Maybach seller had a loan on the car with Crystal Financial LLC, and the payoff is 
quite hilarious. I guess the car was used as collateral for his business because the unpaid principal when he got out of this loan was 18,000, sorry, 18 million four hundred thousand dollars. And then the early termination fee to get out of this loan was two hundred and seventy six thousand dollars. So his total payoff where the Maybach was pledged as collateral was eighteen million six hundred and ninety two thousand dollars. There's lawyer fees too, nine hundred and seventy nine dollars and fifty five cents. That may be the biggest loan ever on a Maybach. Obviously, it's for his whole business or whatever, but the Maybach was in there for $18 million. So that car has gone from a captain of industry to a really goofy YouTuber. And there's actually three titles in here, which means I bought three cars. So, yeah, there's one more I haven't showed you yet. Thank you for watching.